right, welcome back. Uh, now we're going to be doing a little audio demonstration of the Dofer A110 standard VCO. And for this demonstration, I thought we'd start out by going through the different waveforms here available to you. Uh, doing a little demonstration of the octave movement of the pitch of the VCO. And then a little bit of the fine tuning involved in the VCO. Uh, sync input, I know I'm not mentioning this. Uh, I'm going to actually save that for later in the segment. We'll do a little bit of uh, sync input. Uh, I'm going to restrict that because I'm going to actually bring into the A145 and I'd rather not discuss that right now. We'll discuss it a little bit later. So just put that on the back burner for now. So we're going to be talking about the pitch section up here. Um, and then we're going to go into the pulse width here, because right now that's, for the most part, only things we'll be able to hear, because we're not going to be doing any modulation yet. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, we're going to start, I want to make sure I'm in the zero position there, and yes I am. And we're going to start going from left to right on the waveforms. Uh, on the left, again, that's the sawtooth. So, I'm going to patch into the output of the sawtooth and patch that right into my mixer. And my level's fairly low, so when I plug in, you might hear it too loudly. There we go. And I'll adjust it as I need to. Although I'm liking that level, so I'll just keep it there for now. My uh, full output is a little bit loud, so I might bring that down. Because remember, at the 3 o'clock position, that's sort of bordering on distortion there. And so that's what my uh, my sawtooth wave sounds like right now. Okay, I'm going to unplug that. Now let's take a listen at the square wave. So we're going to plug into the square wave and then go into input one. There's our square wave. Okay, I'm going to unplug that. Doing okay so far. Moving right along to the triangle wave. We're going to plug into the triangle wave. And then into the input. There's our triangle wave. Slightly different timbre. Okay. That happens to be one of my favorites. Next up, the sine wave. So we're going to plug into the sine wave and then plug into the input of our mixer. And there we go. There's our sine wave. Okay, and since we're on our sine wave, now we're going to demonstrate uh, the range switch up here. So right now we're in the zero position. Let's jump down an octave. So I'm going to just switch it to minus one. And there the frequency of the VCO has just gone down one octave. Now we're going to go down a little further. Switch into the minus two position. And we have a fairly low pitched VCO. Now I'm going to bring it back to zero. There we go. And then we're going to go in the other direction. So we're going to go plus one. And then we're going to go plus two. And we're going to go back to the zero position. Okay. So I'm going to unpatch that. Uh, and I am going to kind of let you hear triangle wave, same way. So I'm going to plug that into the input. And there we have, again, zero position, minus one position minus two position, and then back up to zero. And we're gonna go plus one, and plus two. And now we're going back to zero. Okay, 
Great job. Now we're going to go into the square wave and hear what that sounds like. So patch. We're in the zero position. Now we're going minus one. Now we're going minus two. And then we're going back to zero. Now we're at zero. Now we're going back up to plus one. And then plus two. There we go, plus two. And then back to zero. Okay. So there is our square wave. Basic idea. So we're going to plug into the song wave now and then go back into our input. There we go. And yes, I did leave it on zero. Perfect. Now we're going to go to the minus one position, minus two position. And then back up to zero. Okay, now we're going to jump up to the plus one position. And then the plus two position. And then we're going to come back down to zero. There we are at zero. Okay. So there we go. That's what the different sound sources of the standard VCO can provide for you. And then there's a little more variation in that. Uh, we didn't talk about tune because I didn't want to demonstrate fine tune for each one of those. But uh, we're going to demonstrate fine tune actually with uh, square wave. And I have there's a method to my madness. Uh, because right after that, we're going to go right into the pulse width demonstration. So I'm plugging into square wave. And then I'm going into my input. So there's my square wave. Sounded pretty good. Square wave. And so now I'm going to adjust the tune. So this is the fine tuning. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit. And you can hear it going down in pitch. Very small amount. And I can go back up. So you can imagine if you had a CV input um, here, and we will demonstrate this later, you could get a sound that sounds kind of like this. Like that. Okay, so that's the tune knob. Now moving down to pulse width. Now right now I have it at kind of a semi-wide position, I suppose. Uh, if I go this way, my pulse width is getting more narrow. And if I go this way, it's getting even more narrow. More narrow. More narrow until I don't hear it at all. Um, if I bring it back slowly in, we can hear a very narrow pulse width on the square wave. And then we can hear it change as we move down the settings. And then again at the far right we have our pulse width at the maximum until it's inaudible. So it might throw you off if uh, you know you plug it in and then you plug in the square wave. It actually happened when I was doing some setup. Uh, I plugged in the square wave and I thought, hey, uh, I can't hear my square wave. What's going on? And then I realized, oh, it's my just my knob go. So it's kind of what pulse width can do for you. So you can imagine uh, when you have a modulation source or a control voltage source coming in, uh, the possibilities of how you could change the standard VCO sound. So, for instance, you have something coming in the pulse width CV1. Uh, you can have this basically changing the whole time. Rather than have to stand there holding it, you know, turning it, kind of freeze up your hands if you have something like an LFO, moving it back and forth. 
And then pulse width CV2, we'll demonstrate that a little bit later when we go into the modulation of the pulse width. And so there you have it. Short little demonstration of the basic features of the Dofer A110 standard VCO. Let me unpatch that. And then we can go into the next little segment where we're going to be doing a little bit of modulation.